that this person sitting next to me took English examinations thrice. Perfect 90 over 90 in PTE writing, 9.0 in IELTS writing, 8.5 in IELTS writing. Word count, 347. And what did we say earlier? 250 to 350 words will do. Because you cannot give what you do not have. Being able to relate many ideas to the task description that's given to you is essential. You cannot organize something that doesn't exist in the first place. In the last few weeks, we asked our reviewees, what is it that they want us to feature in our YouTube vlogs? Well, we thought of something that's not common. In fact, we've searched for videos on YouTube and we are not able to find quite a lot of this example. So what are we going to do in the next two videos? Sir Brian, our lecturer, got the perfect nine in IELTS writing. We'll make a writing task one and writing task two on the spot. You heard us right on the spot to showcase how it's done the 9.09er way. So first, Sir Philip, maybe you can give us a background of what writing task two is before we'll ask Sir Brian to come up with his model essay. Definitely. There, when it comes to the writing task two aspect of the IELTS exam, one is expected to write an essay uh, that is a minimum of 250 words regarding a topic of general interest. So this could range anything from global warming to jam making to seafaring that tests the ability of the candidate to express opinions regarding this topic. And the, one of the most common challenges regarding this test is the time limit. People usually have lots of ideas, but they don't have the time to write them down. So being able to know what the techniques are and having a clear idea of how to approach the test is critical to, being, to ensuring that your wonderful thoughts make it on the paper in time. And this is something that we shall have a demo of today, I believe. Okay, so just to add, according to one of the big bosses of IELTS in Asia, I met when I went to Shanghai December 1 to 5, 2017. 20% of Filipino candidates cannot finish two tasks in one hour. So Sir Philip is correct in mentioning the time limit is an important factor to consider. So what do we do? Initially, we give our reviewees information, of course. So we have here more than 100 writing questions that can possibly come out in the actual examination if we are to base the, or if we are going to use the previous years, previous test dates as our basis, and we also have models for them. So there are writing tasks here answering the questions that might come out in the examination. So what did we prepare here? We have more than a hundred writing questions, and because this is supposed to be on the spot, so Ryan right here will randomly select Okay, so will you please close your eyes, Sir Brian, and sure. share one writing task two question? Okay, here it goes. Okay, let's take here a look. Go. Okay, Sir Brian chose, okay, well, number 124. So let's take a look at question 124. 124. This is writing task two, which is, by the way, exactly the same for both academic and general training test takers. Okay. If I may read it for everyone, it says, Nowadays, people prefer to shop in supermarkets rather than local stores. What are the reasons behind it? Is it a negative or positive development? So this is an open-ended type of question. Not agree or disagree, not discuss both views, not do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, okay? So you're going to see on your screen, on your monitor, a uh, timer, okay? It's worth a stopwatch because Sir Brian is supposed to finish this in 40 minutes in the actual examination. But for someone who got 9.0 in IELTS writing, let us see how many minutes he'll be able to consume in finishing this output. So before Sir Brian is going to start, maybe uh, you, you want to say something for our viewers and watch uh, our audience, our subscribers. IELTS writing is definitely the toughest 
IELTS examination out there. It's very hard to prepare for. It's very challenging in terms of the brainstorming aspect mm -hmm. and also the execution. It's just very tough. But with the right strategies and the right preparation, and of course, the correct information from mentors who are experienced and trained mm -hmm. to teach the right things to students, it's definitely possible to complete this in, I would say, under 40 minutes mm. or even less than 20 <laughs> minutes. Okay, so we're going to find out. So you're going to see a stopwatch on your screen. Shall we start? All right. In three, three. <laughs> two, one. Timer starts now. So the question here is nowadays, people prefer to shop in supermarkets rather than local stores. What are, the re what are the reasons behind it? Is it a positive or negative development? Firstly, I would like to start with the format. So just put here the introduction and then I'll put the reasons and where the arguments or um, the examples in the body. And then I'll write a conclusion at the end because this is how open-ended questions are supposed to be responded to. And then I usually start with an outline. And I would want to say that the reasons why people usually shop in supermarkets is that it's very convenient most people can think of that mm -hmm. okay so it's very convenient probably because they sell a wide range of products and um, I can put some examples of these products for example I could put produce meat uh, you know toiletries maybe and even uh, household items mm -hmm. and then uh, the result of that is that uh, people get to save time and energy. Another reason that I would want to put in would be that um, probably uh, it is a more uh, comfortable, mm -hmm. um, you know, environment to shop in. Okay, because probably they have the amenities to make the shopping experience a better one for. Uh, most customers mm -hmm. okay so I would want to mention for example full, full air conditioning mm -hmm. and um, they having organized shelving and uh, mm -hmm. convenient checkout counters check out counters so people have the best experience okay now I would want to say that this is not really a positive development so I'd say that it's a negative development and the reason for that is that it affects the local economy. The local economy because definitely um, smaller shops cannot compete with larger business establishments or maybe the, these larger retail networks. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put some examples of companies that can close down, such as, uh, let's say, meat shops, bakeries, um, fruit and vegetable stands, mm -hmm. and maybe even local grocery stores. All right. And uh, as a result of this, this can impact the income of people and also the community. Also, I believe this is negative because it promotes um, spending or maybe I would put there that people tend to spend more because the prices are much more expensive uh, probably because these companies would need to charge for let's see um, overheads okay such as maybe their power rent or let's put rent utilities Okay, security and taxes. All of these will translate to higher retail prices, um, which can definitely make people spend more than their budget. Okay, now that's probably a time-consuming task, but you would understand that writing an outline like this will help you to write much faster. So let's get started with the introduction. I usually don't write very creative intros, I hate creative intros because they take a lot of time. So what I usually do is just to paraphrase the task description. So I use this one. Just uh, want to put it here so I can see it. Uh, and uh, put the paraphrase version. So I would write something like, There are those who are of the belief or you know, that shopping in supermarkets, supermarkets is more beneficial 
We might have oh. bashers checking the spending. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shopping. Okay. okay. In supermarkets, it's more beneficial okay, to people compared to uh, uh, buying items in local stores. Okay. Or maybe let's just paraphrase this entire line and say nowadays, let, let's say these days, more and more people are choosing to shop in supermarkets compared to local stores. There are a number of factors that contribute to this tendency among uh, consumers. Nevertheless, this phenomenon, phenomenon may be perceived as a negative trend in many societies. All right, so we're done with the introduction. And now we're going to move on to the body. We're just going to put all of these in one paragraph. Uh, this is about the reasons. Okay, so I'd like to put that in. One of the reasons people choose to shop in supermarkets rather than local stores is that they offer so much convenience. This is because these larger retail networks stock an extensive range of products such as and I would put all of those examples um, let's just put produce meat toiletries and even household items I'm just gonna copy that right in the actual examination you cannot copy and paste though such as produce meat toiletries and even household items as a result people who shop in these places are able to save so much time and energy while um, buying the essentials or the things that they need. In addition, and let's move on to the next argument here. This is about comfort, so let's move on. Okay, uh, people find so much comfort while shopping in these places or in these uh, establishments. Don't want to repeat the same words over and over again. Uh, shopping in these establishments, okay? Um, the reason for this is that they have the amenities to make the shopping, or to make shopping, maybe shopping, a better or a more, uh, what, what did I write there? Um, so let me see, right? A better one, okay. A better one, a uh, better experience, okay, for their customers. For example, they are usually fully air conditioned, okay? Um, uh, uh, they are usually, they have, they have full air conditioning. Full air condition, sorry about that. Let me just check that. They have full air conditioning, okay? Um, organized shelving for items and also very convenient checkout counters making the whole shopping experience okay or making shopping shopping um, what did they put there right okay um, so much hassle free okay or uh, totally hassle free totally hassle free for most individuals okay next right let's move on to the next question and uh, answer the second question which is whether it's a positive or negative development I would want to put here that it is not a negative development so I want to use a transitional device here like however okay I'm of the view that this is a negative or this leads to leads to many negative consequences to both individuals and the society for one um, the uh, proliferation of supermarkets in many communities can lead to a negative impact to the local economy um, for the reason that and then um, what's the reason <laughs> right uh, smaller shops 
cannot compete with these larger retail outlets. Such stores as meat shops, or let's change this into something more fancy like homegrown businesses as meat shops, fruit and vegetable stands. What else do we have there? And local bakeries. Bakeries and local grocery stores would completely stop operating if uh, supermarkets were to be built near them. In effect, this can affect the income of people and the, uh, yeah, so I think that's it, right, um, the whole community. Right, now I want to proceed to the next argument, and the next argument says that, right, uh, it's more expensive, okay? Moreover, people tend to spend more. If, um, or I would want to start with a general statement so it can affect people as well because, or maybe individuals would be a better word here, individuals as well because they would tend to spend more if they patronize supermarkets too much. The retail prices in these uh, stores or in these uh, uh, establishments are usually higher because of uh, uh, the cost of overheads, okay? Such as, or because of, um, uh, yeah, right, okay? rent, utility, security, in taxes, okay? Because um, of the cost of overheads, such as utilities, taxes, um, what else do we have there? Right, okay, um, security, security and rent, which all translate into higher um, uh, costs, um, the higher um, uh, price of goods, okay? Um, oh, that's repetitive, so I want to just um, change that and put it here, here. The retail prices in these establishments are usually higher because of the cost of overhead, such as utilities, taxes, security, and rent, okay? Um, which, in turn, can uh, lead people to spend too much or more than or beyond their budgets, okay? Um when they uh, regularly shop in these places. In conclusion, there are many reasons. There are, sorry. There are many reasons behind the increasing popularity of supermarkets over local stores in many countries worldwide. Nonetheless, this can be seen as a negative development for both individuals and the entire community. All right, there, and probably I'll need to edit this one. <laughs> so I'm just going to zoom this out so that you can see the entire thing. And I'm going to count the number of words that we have written. So I'm gonna just do a quick word count. So um, there, let me just check the number of words. This is 366 words. And there you have it, okay? And probably I'll need uh, some time to, oh, I didn't yeah. remove the question. So mm -hmm. let's check the number of words here. I'm sorry. Right, okay, so that's just 349, which is perfect actually yeah. for the examination because you want to write no more than 350. Okay, so while Sir Brian right here is doing the editing, we just wanted to show you that this is how it's done in the actual examination. So first, you're going to read the question. After that, 
you need to identify the most important keywords. You don't want to miss any of these keywords because you might get a lower band score if your answer is not totally appropriate or you did not fully understand the question. What did you notice? Sir Brian did not launch into his essay writing immediately. What did he do? After identifying the keywords, he made an outline. It's as if when you're building, you need to plan for it first. You don't start building immediately. You need to have an outline. So in the actual examination for paper-based IELTS, the test booklet can be used as your outline. This is where you can possibly write your outline. For computer-delivered exam, it's up to you. You can, you can make an outline before the actual essay, but that's all part of the 40 minutes. Notice, it's very easy for you to come up with the essay and finish it if you already have an organized outline. So what did you notice? Sir Brian used transitional words from time to time. Paragraphs are not that long. In fact, for one paragraph, minimum of two sentences, maximum of four sentences. For the entire essay, four to five paragraphs. And if you read the entire output, you won't see any big words. Because like what I've said, that's not a requirement to pass the examination. You will also notice examples are required because if you are not able to write examples, then you won't get the necessary, the required bad score. Now, I also want to remind you that this person sitting next to me took English examinations thrice. Perfect 90 over 90 in PTE writing, perfect 9.0 in IELTS writing, and another attempt, 8.5 in IELTS writing. Now, if you're going to say, oh, it's just a fluke, it cannot be a fluke. Why? There are people. I have known who have taken the examination more than more than three times already and cannot even get a seven. Here's someone who took it thrice and got the perfect score in two attempts and nearly the perfect score in another attempt. So, uh, have we edited it? So, by the way, that's what Sir Brian did. He edited his output before submitting it. Why? We are humans, right? To commit a mistake is part of human nature. So we don't really expect people to write as if they are gods. At the end of the day, we commit mistakes. That's why you have to edit your work before you submit. So what do you do when you read it all over again? You check for spelling, for capitalization, for punctuation, or repetitive use of word, or uh, let's say the verb tenses, the grammar. Simple it's all part of how it's done. So at 9.09er, what do we do? We provide the candidates with the questions, and we ask them to come up with an output, and we edit their work. We explain why this is right, pinpoint the strength, point out the weaknesses. But it's not as if it's spoon-fed. We want the reviewees to find out what's wrong. We want to bring out the best in them. We teach critical thinking because at the end of the day, in the actual examination, you don't have your coach beside you. So we don't spoon-feed. We provide them the arsenal, the weaponry of what they need, but guide them in the process. Okay, so before we turn over to Sir Brian for his output, what about Sir Philip? Uh, what do you have to say for our candidates? Because Sir Philip here got the second highest mm. grade in writing. Well, for oh. IELTS and OET. So, Sir Philip, what can you say about the outlining, <laughs> brainstorming, <laughs> writing, and editing phase of uh, writing as a subtest? You cannot give what you do not have. So reading is an essential part of your preparation for the IELTS exam, especially because the topics that can come out can be anything under the sun. Now, supposedly the topics that are provided in the exam are accessible uh, based on your everyday experience, your encounters in daily life. However, a lot of our candidates tend to be focused uh, to, a, to a dangerous extent on their house and then their work and then their house and then their work reflecting a poverty of experience that will translate to a harder time brainstorming f during the first part of writing the essay so please read because you cannot give what you do not have so being able to relate uh, many ideas to the task description that's given to you is essential because you cannot organize something that doesn't exist in the first place. So for the third time, please read so that you'd have lots of ideas to put into your essay. Okay, so we bet Sir Brian has finished editing his output. 
Sir Brian? Yes, um, I'm done. I just did some minor editing mm -hmm. and I'm very happy with the output actually. It's very responsive to the question, which is very mm -hmm. important in IELTS. You have to make sure your response is connected to the question. And it uses very simple words, but it communicates to the reader very clearly what it intends to communicate, mm -hmm. which is essentially what writing is all about. A lot of people think that writing is um, a test that is supposed to impress the examiner. And the purpose of this examination is to show showcase one's talent in writing. But this is not really an essay writing contest or um, you would not really win a prize after this or this is not going to be published for everyone to see. So I think what's important is that it communicates the message that you want to communicate. And using simple words sometimes actually you know, does that. And uh, this is uh, the kind of writing that you should be producing in your examination to get the best possible scores. Trust me, because I've passed the examination mm -hmm. and got stellar grades in the test using the techniques that I've learned from 9.09 or IELTS Review and Tutorial Center. You can never go wrong if you're using the right strategies. Are we supposed to read this for our, uh, the final output? Uh, sure. Okay. So oh, there you go. The question is, nowadays, people prefer to shop in supermarkets rather than local stores. What are the reasons behind it? Is it a negative or positive development? Introduction is supposed to mention the topic and an overview, what to expect in the essay. Two to four sentences will do. So for the introduction. These days, more and more people are choosing to shop in supermarkets compared to local stores. There are a number of factors that contribute to this tendency among consumers. Nevertheless, this phenomenon may be perceived as a negative trend in many societies. Okay, so if you notice, the intro is not fancy, but it's clean, it's accurate. First paragraph is very important because if it's not well written, you don't really expect the examiner to, fit, to finish reading the rest of the essay. So intro is very important now we move on to the body and we're expecting to answer the questions what are the reasons and whether it's positive or negative so let's begin with the first paragraph of the body one of the reasons people choose to shop in supermarkets rather than local stores is that they offer so much convenience this is because these larger retail networks stock an extensive range of products such as produce meat toiletries, and even household items. As a result, people who shop in these places are able to save so much time and energy while buying the things that they need. In addition, people find so much comfort while shopping in these establishments. The reason for this is that they have the amenities to make shopping a better experience for their customers. For example, they have full air conditioning, organized shelving for items, and also very convenient checkout counters, making shopping totally hassle-free for most individuals. Sir Philip, what can you say about that paragraph? It, ha it is an excellent demonstration of paraphrasing, for one thing. Uh, you would notice that Sir Brian was able to say the same thing in different ways. Uh, and this is a critical skill so that you avoid being repetitive and to demonstrate the broad range of vocabulary that he has at his disposal. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't say shopping, 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 but rather there is a wide variety. In addition, I would like to point out that his ability to make a list, for example, produce, meat, toiletries, and even household items, these are things that seem mundane that seem normal <laughs> but actually they're an excellent demonstration that it is the clarity of your language that matters more rather mm -hmm. than something that is meant to impress mm -hmm. so that paragraph answered the first question let's move on to the next paragraph which answers the question is this positive or negative so what did sir brian write here however i'm of the view that this leads to many negative consequences to both individuals and the society for one, the proliferation of supermarkets in many communities can lead to a negative impact to the local economy for the reason that smaller shops cannot compete with these larger retail outlets. Such homegrown businesses as meat shops, fruit and vegetable stands, bakeries, and local grocery stores would completely stop operating if supermarkets were to be built near them. In effect, this can affect the income of people and the whole community. 
Moreover, it can affect individuals as well because they would tend to spend more if they patronize supermarkets too much. The retail prices in these establishments are usually higher because of the overheads such as utilities, taxes, security, and rent, which in turn can lead people to spend beyond their budgets when they regularly shop in these places. What did you notice in that paragraph? It's direct to the point. Mm. It's straightforward, no complications. It's not even rocket science. Mm. Sir Brian is just answering the question and explaining why it's negative with the help of examples. So, for the conclusion. In conclusion, there are many reasons behind the increasing popularity of supermarkets over local stores in many countries worldwide. Nonetheless, this can be seen as a negative development for both individuals and the entire community. Okay, so word count, 347, and what did we say earlier? 250 to 350 words will do. Four to five paragraphs, and in this case, there are four paragraphs. No such par- There are no paragraphs that are super long and super short. No run-on sentences. Clear examples. At the same time, language that's easily understood by an average person. So, mm. Sir Philip, anything else to add to Sir Brian's output? I would like to commend him for his very clear flow of thoughts, the reasoning that leads from his direct answer and his elaboration of how this responds to the task. It's very tidy, it's very straightforward, and this is something that would benefit any candidate who makes use of the same technique. So imagine if Sir Brian is your lecturer and every time you attend a writing class, he's going to make an on-the-spot essay for you. It's not every day that you have someone getting 9.0 in writing as your lecture. So if you need help in the writing subtest, can't get that required 6.5, can't even get to 7, then you know whom to contact. We are 9.09. You can look forward to quality content like this in the weeks to come, and we look forward to meeting you. Thank Thank you you for for watching. watching.